What's up guys, Smiles here with 9.5Mac, and if you're a fan of good ideas, consider subscribing to the channel for future content like this. I've had my base model Mac Studio for nearly a full week, and so I want to make this video essentially telling you guys if I regret my purchasing decision. I bought this machine to theoretically edit our videos for the foreseeable future, and I wanna talk about how it's been for me in that arena, as well as the general experience I've had with this computer. Something I can definitely appreciate about Mac Studio is the unboxing experience. The Mac Mini is Apple's cheapest Mac and the unboxing experience definitely reflects that. But this box is super sturdy. It comes with a top handle strap and a really nice folding mechanism with this floating centerpiece to hold the computer in place. It's just one of those boxes you look at and think, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not throwing that away. The power cable they include is also a step up from the Mac Mini in terms of build quality. So despite the design, which we're about to get into now, it feels like Apple really wanted to position this as a Mini Mac Pro rather than a Mac Mini Pro. I want to firstly talk about the design of this computer because I gotta say, it's not really good, right? I can't be the only one with that opinion. And it's not necessarily bad to me either, but as Jeff Benjamin said as I was talking to him about the design, it kind of looks like Apple phoned this design in. It's totally utilitarian in terms of aesthetics, and I can appreciate Apple trying to cater to that crowd on a fundamental level, but there's no flair, there's no pizzazz. It literally looks like an elongated Mac mini with some ports on the front and exhaust holes on the back. If this was purely pitched by Apple as a server or commercial oriented product, that'd be one thing. But as a device that's called Mac Studio, I feel like it should have some flair to it. But from a general usability and functionality standpoint, the design is great. Despite the height increase from the Mac mini, it still fits perfectly under my monitor on my desk setup and the front facing IO is glorious. And speaking of IO, let's talk about that because that's probably the biggest differentiator between Mac Studio and everything else within the M1 lineup. Here on the base model, you've got two USB-C ports on the front next to an SD card slot. But on the M1 Ultra variant, these USB-C ports are Thunderbolt enabled. So this computer provides up to six Thunderbolt ports, which is a power user's dream. But heck, just having the four Thunderbolt ports plus the two Type-C ports is already pretty awesome for me personally. I used to have a full-size Thunderbolt dock at my desk with a bunch of Thunderbolt ports, USB-A ports and an SD card slot and etc. Now that I'm rocking Mac Studio, I was able to downsize to a much smaller Thunderbolt 4 dock, saving me some room on my desk. And all of my ports on the back are fully occupied with 99% of all my necessary peripherals being plugged straight into the machine. And being able to just pop my SD card into the front of the Mac is something I've been dreaming about since I got my 2012 Intel Core i7 Mac Mini back in like high school. I know a lot of people wanna hear how Mac Studio speakers sound because Apple once again included speakers in their mini desktop pretty much out of pity. And yeah, I, I would pity anyone who rather listen to the speakers on this than spend $40 on something a million times better. But don't take my word for it. You should just take a listen for it yourself. It's not spitting to earn us rich. It's been obsessed since middle school when Alarm will burn us mix as hot as hip hop of the day. Now we Luda and Jay, a shot to get job rule at every So yeah, it's it's not not great. Performance is probably one of the biggest reasons anyone would buy Mac Studio over something like the MacBook Pro for the money. In fact, I already uploaded a direct performance comparison between M1 Pro and Mac Studio. But overall for $2,000, this is Apple's best value performance machine for that price point. Certainly not the best value period, but definitely for two grand. Overall performance has been great for me. I'll get more specific on benchmarks and video editing in a bit, but I'd say besides that, the biggest benefit I've received hasn't necessarily been a faster feeling machine overall, but more overhead for multitasking. My M1 mini never felt slow and neither does my M1 MacBook Pro, but most of the time if I'm exporting a project or working with multiple power hungry apps, the computer will usually just bog down in certain areas. Using Chrome while my video exports may be choppy or the finder may be a bit unresponsive, and I'm sure anyone that's truly pushing these base level M1 Macs has experienced something along the lines of what I'm talking about. But on this base model Mac Studio, I haven't really experienced that, or even for the most intensive tasks like rendering raw 8K video, and that's honestly a pretty underrated aspect of performance that I don't think people focus on enough with these machines. Not just how fast does it go, but how fast can you do multiple things at once? And despite the marginal differences between M1 Pro 
Pro and M1 Max for most numerical based benchmarks, the experience in that arena is pretty vastly different. One of the biggest internal aspects of Mac Studio that Apple highlighted is the new cooling solution. And as you can see, it's quite the large apparatus and it's even heavier with the M1 Ultra variant. In fact, it's two whole pounds heavier, but how's the overall cooling and especially fan noise? Well, I'm happy to report that I have yet to hear Mac Studio make a sound. There were a handful of tests I ran between all of my M1 machines, including my MacBook Pro, and while there were a few that kicked my MacBook's fans into high gear, Mac Studio stayed very quiet throughout all of my testing. And not that this detail matters a whole lot, but it seems as though you can always at least feel the fans in action, even when the machine is practically running idle. You can reach your hands behind the studio and feel a little breeze coming from the exhaust. So that's a first from an Apple Silicon Mac that I've tested at least. Performance in Final Cut Pro is one of the biggest reasons I got this machine. And so, of course, I ran a handful of benchmarks to get an understanding of how Mac Studio performs against my other Apple Silicon Macs. So I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of benchmarks for time exports for various kinds of video resolutions and codecs, and then I'll give my thoughts. So with that, you can see that Mac Studio was clearly faster than M1 and M1 Pro across the board, except for with R3D footage. And if you watch my MacBook Pro comparison video, you'll get a better understanding as to why. But overall, the biggest benefit you're getting with this base Mac Studio compared to M1 Pro and M1 is for 8K video rendering. If you shoot on cameras like the Canon R5 or Sony A1 or higher end cinema cameras, you're definitely gonna save a lot of time with exports if you go with M1 Max or M1 Ultra. And while some people think that 8K video is something that they'll never be shooting, there's been a handful of rumors that suggest that the next pro iPhone will be capable of shooting 8K video. So Apple may be pushing 8K to the masses sooner than you think. That's just some food for thought though. For relatively basic 4K video and things like that, Mac Studio simply isn't worth $1,000 more than something like the M1 Mac Mini. And I think that's obvious based on the benchmark results. I, I simply can't justify or recommend buying Mac Studio over standard M1 for the more simple video work given the price difference. But obviously when paying that premium for Mac Studio, you're getting more than just added performance. The ports, the cooling, all of that definitely adds up. There's also some people who may be wondering why I didn't buy the M1 Ultra variant. Well, the way I like to approach life is to let Jeff buy the most expensive variant of any product, and then I see if it's worth it to buy for myself. We're gonna have an M1 Max versus M1 Ultra comparison video coming very soon, but so far the benefits you're getting within video editing for like double the price of M1 Max is proving to be pretty insignificant thus far, and I definitely do not regret going with the base model for my own personal use. But like I said, stay tuned for that full comparison video. Overall, do I regret buying Mac Studio and specifically, do I regret buying the base model? Well, not exactly. While I do think the design leaves a lot to be desired and there's still a few bugs to be worked out with this machine, the ports, the performance, and specifically the overhead I'm getting compared to my MacBook Pro and M1 Mac Mini is why I think I made the right choice here. The Mac Mini is a heck of a lot cheaper and performs very close to M1 Max in many aspects, but you're missing the ports, you can't get as much RAM, and you can't get as much storage. And memory and storage are pretty big factors for most power users, especially for people using a lot of apps like Pro apps within the Adobe suite, a lot of them are very RAM hungry. Things like that are a part of why Mac Studio is worth it for the extra a thousand plus dollars if you're gonna be doing that type of stuff. But if you've already got an M1 Mac Mini, a MacBook Air with M1, or a MacBook Pro with M1, or even the new 16 or 14 inch MacBook Pro, and you're considering this as a potential upgrade machine, unless you just want the desktop form factor and you're doing crazy intensive work, this probably isn't the machine for you. We've still got a few more Mac Studio videos on the way, so if you're looking forward to that, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Thank you.